state meeting of June 13th, 2019, being held June 19th. I'm Public Advocate Jamani Williams. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Morelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegie. Presente. Deutsch. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman, Lander, Levin, Levine, here, Lewis, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Miller, Moya, Perkins, Powers, Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Pre Present. <laughs> Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Borelli. Fallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Ulrich. Matteo, Combo, Speaker Johnson. Thank you. I'm now closing the recess stated meeting of June 13, 2019. I would like to now open the stated meeting of June 19, 2019. Wish everyone a happy Juneteenth and ask for a roll call. Adams. I vote aye. Every Samuel. Is it roll call? No. Roll call. Oh, present. I mean, um, aye. <laughs> oh, present. Thank you. Ayala. I vote aye. Aye. Not present, sorry. Thank you. Baron. Borelli. I'm so confused. I, 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 think, I think I'm here. Okay. It's a roll call if you are present or not. This is a roll call vote, everyone. Sorry. This is an attendance vote, everyone. Brandon. Still here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Aki. Deutsch. Diaz. Here. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Here. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Still here. King. Ku. 
Present. Kozlowitz. Lantzman. Lander. Where would I go? Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaka. Presente. Miller. Moya. Here. Perkins. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Pass. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, who is the executive director of Catholic Charities and is also in residence in the Roman Catholic Parish of Our Savior here in Manhattan. Almighty God, <clears throat> once more we ask your blessing upon this gathering, this important meeting in which those elected officials of this great city of New York will vote to provide the resources necessary that this city thrive, that we take care of those who are in need, that we provide for the many things that make this a great metropolis. We give you thanks for their diligence, that in this time in which there is so much suspicion of those in elected office, we ask your blessing that those who have stood for office, that they be blessed. They be blessed with integrity, that they be blessed with vision. They be blessed with passion, and they be blessed with ability to work together. And so we give you thanks for these women and men who do this service on behalf of all of them. And as we approach this summer time, especially bless the children of our city who will finish this school year and will have this summertime for relaxation, but also for growth, who will work. And we also ask your blessing on the new children who come to our city, our metropolis, from distant countries because they flee the violence, the extortion, the lack of opportunity in our southern neighbors. Continue to make us a welcoming city so that they might make a new life here, but not merely for them, but that they continue to enhance and make us a stronger place. Bless the families of this great city. They come in so many different shapes and sizes, they come in different varieties. Bless them all, that they might be places where love abounds, where children are supported, and people grow and are empowered. And yes, bless our religious institutions, that we who invoke your name, God, may not think that we are all that perfect. But bless our institutions with integrity. And when we have sinned, as my church has, bless us with the ability to correct ourselves and to humbly ask for your grace. And since it is summer, Lord, we just have kind of one more request, and you're doing a good job in blessing our New York Yankees. I might add, two places ahead of our colleagues from Boston. Could you do a little better job with the Mets? They need your help, so do that and help us to relax this summer. And so we ask you for a special favor. Give us all an abundance of ice cream in our favorite colors and flavors with a dearth of calories. All that we ask. Amen. Thank you.
thank you, Monsignor. We can ask some prayers for my New York Knicks. That will be awesome. I, I second that. Probably I'll now ask Speaker Johnson to spread Shh. the invocation on the record. Shh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. I want to thank, I want to thank Monsignor Kevin Sullivan for being here today, and I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Monsignor Sullivan has been the Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York since 2001, and he was immediately tasked with consoling families of those who had lost loved ones on 9-11, Monsignor Sullivan has made an impact on all New Yorkers. Monsignor Sullivan is not a stranger to any of us here in these chambers. He testified last year when this council conducted an oversight hearing on the Trump administration's inhumane policy of separating, separating immigrant children from their families. Monsignor Sullivan, in the last two months, led a mission to Central America to meet with families and to meet with unaccompanied minors who have been caught up in violence and exploitation and extortion. Monsignor Sullivan is a leader in our city. And ever since getting back, even before his mission to Central America, he has been a strong advocate for years and years and years for immigrant families. And he has become and has been a loud voice on their behalf. Monsignor Kevin Sullivan is a mensch. I want to thank him for being here today and for everything that you do for our metropolis, for the city that you love, and for the families that call our city home. I am so honored to have you here today to spread this invocation. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We ask for the adoption of minutes. None. Message and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered pre M171 and M172. Communications from the Office of Management and Budget. Petitions and communications. One moment, sir. Finance. Preconsidered M173. Communication from the Chancellor. Finance. There are no petitions nor communications, Mr. Public Advocate. Land use call-ups? None. Communications from the speaker. Oh. Yeah, thank you. We'll now have communication from the speaker. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Public Advocate. Happy Wednesday to everyone who is here with us today. And welcome to our third stated meeting in the last seven days. Uh, before we get into today's agenda, I want to recognize two of our amazing sergeants at arms who sadly are leaving us to begin new chapters in their careers. Edwin Lopez is moving on to the Sheriff's Department. I want to give him a big round of applause. And Sharice Torres is going to the NYPD. I want to thank Edwin and Sharice for their professionalism and their dedication and their hard work and their time here at the City Council. We are enormously grateful for their service. We are sad for the council, but we're really happy for the people of New York City, for the Sheriff's Department, and for the NYPD. So we wish Edwin and Sharice good luck, and we thank them for all of their hard work. Uh, and I, I'm really just grateful for, for their service. Um, I also want to I also want to mention, as the public advocate said, uh, today we celebrate Juneteenth, which is the anniversary of the end of slavery in Texas and the end of one of the darkest chapters in American history. But the work of building an America free from racial discrimination did not stop 154 years ago today. Juneteenth is a celebration of the progress we have made, but it is also a reminder of how much work still lays before us 
Let us all take today to recommit ourselves to the fight for racial equality and justice in this country, and let us never stop fighting until the day we can honestly say that liberty and justice are enjoyed equally by all Americans. Uh, now I want to move on to why we are here today, which is the adoption of the New York City fiscal 2020 budget. And as I said at the handshake, this is a personal budget for me. It is my second as speaker, and it aligns with my guiding principle, which is do the most good for the people who need it most. The City Council has a lot to be proud of in this budget, but before I highlight some of the victories, there are a lot of people that I need to thank and that all of us need to thank, and I mean a lot. Adopting a $92.8 billion budget takes a team of dedicated, hardworking, knowledgeable professionals, and here at the City Council, we have an abundance of people who fit that description. I will start with my dear friend, an amazing member of the City Council, as he said at the pre-stated press conference, the Queen of Queens, our Finance Committee Chair, Danny Drum. I want to thank him for his amazing job his hard work, his dedication, his long hours, chairing those executive budget hearings. We're so proud of you, Danny. So, so proud of you. Congratulations. Couldn't ask for a better partner. I also want to thank, uh, really, just an amazing friend and colleague, someone who takes this process very seriously, but does it with a great sense of humor and a great disposition, someone who's been a leader since her time starting here in the council, uh, the chair of our subcommittee on the capital budget, my good friend and an amazing, amazing woman, Vanessa Gibson. I want to thank her as well. I want to thank the entire budget negotiating team, which was led by uh, Danny Drum. And I want to thank all of the council members uh, who really contributed to this process. I'm really grateful at the budget that we've arrived at. Uh, and I think this is a budget that we can all be proud of. And I really want to thank, this is his first budget. This is someone who I would be speaking to at 7 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the morning and 40 times throughout the day, someone who has a newborn baby, someone uh, who I think has done an incredible job over the last year, who is a resource, who is always available, who is thoughtful, and who really tries to work with every member here who has led the staff, I think, in a united way. I am just supremely proud of the chief of staff here who leads and helps run this city council. I want to give a huge thank you to Jason Goldman, who's done an amazing job. Next, let's give uh, a, a big round of applause uh, to the entire staff of the Finance Division. They have worked tirelessly since the release of the preliminary budget in February to get through the hearings in March, the budget response in April, the executive budget hearings in May, and the countless hours of B&T and budget negotiations in June uh, to start uh, by thanking each member of the Finance Division individually. I want to start with the amazing Deputy Directors, Regina Pareto ryan Nathan Toth, and Paul Scamone. I want to thank our Deputy Director and Chief Economist, Dr. Ray Majeski. I want to thank his Assistant Director, Emre Adev, our Supervising Economist, Paul Sturm. I want to thank our unit heads who just do such an incredible job. I'm so proud of, of their leadership and the work they do. Uh, Dohini Sampura, who is just uh, a rock star. I want to thank Isha Wright, who always has the information at her fingertips and is invaluable. I want to thank Chima Obichere. Chima, good to see you. I want to thank Krillian Francisco, who I worked with when I chaired the Health Committee. And I want to thank John Russell, who's always showing us how to save money in the city of New York. 
I want to thank our fantastic, amazing, invaluable uh, senior counsel who was at all of the executive budget hearings, and I know I've relied upon her. Danny has relied upon her. I want to thank Rebecca Chasen for her leadership. I want to thank her team of assistant counsel, Stephanie Ruiz and Noah Brick, for their hard work. And I want to thank all of the financial analysts and economists. And I apologize. I'm a little tired, so I apologize if I mispronounce your name. It's not purposeful. I want to thank Aliyah Ali, uh, Sebastian Baki, uh, John Basil, uh, Chelsea uh, Batemore, Monica Bujak, Peter Butler, Savannah Chu, Raymond Furlong, Sarah Gastelum, uh, Hector German, uh, Julia Haramis, Lauren Hunt, Florentine Kabor, Daniel Krupp, William, I always get your last name wrong, William, I apologize, Cheddar Mateng, and I tried. Uh, Kira McDonald, Caitlin O'Hagan, uh, Monica Peppel, Michelle Peregrin, Frank Sarno, Masis Sarkisian, Jonathan Seltzer, Nevin Singh, Kendall Stevenson, James Reyes, Nashia Roman, Anna Maria Camelo Vega, Andrew Wilbur, Stephen Williams, Davis Winslow, Luke Zangerle, and I want to also thank the administrative support team who do hard work all throughout the budget process as well. They may not be in us in the BNT room, but they are working hard around the clock, doing the same long hours as everyone else in the finance division. I want to thank Nicole Anderson, Courtney Summaries, uh, uh, Latina Brown, and one of the longest serving members, staff members here, an amazing, amazing woman. She, we are so grateful she is still here. She doesn't look old enough to have been here as long as she's been here. I want to thank Maria Pagan for her dedication and hard work and service here at the City Council. And last but certainly not least, our fearless leader, the person who makes it all happen, someone who knows the ins and the outs, who has done this many, many times, who has dedicated almost all of her professional career to the city of New York at the city council. We are so proud to have a finance director who is available to each and every one of us, who knows the issues inside and out, who gets in the room and negotiates, who pushes on the issues, who explains the difficulties, who gives us broader context, and doesn't just do it from February to June, but throughout the entire year with the budget modifications, with the new revenue estimates, with the November plan, with our capital budget. She leads this entire division. She does it in an amazing way. I am so fortunate that I get to be speaker with an amazing finance director like our own Latanya McKinney, and I want to thank her very, very much for her hard work. I'd also like to thank Chuck Davis and uh, Fran Della Vecchia and the entire Appointments and Investigations Unit for vetting the organizations that receive discretionary funds, as well as our entire General Counsel's Office for assisting with our disclosures. Now I want to turn to the budget itself. Because of this council, I believe our city's fiscal future is more secure. We added $250 million to our budget reserves and we invested $40 million in census outreach to ensure that New York receives its fair share of resources from the federal government. Because of this council, students will have 200 more social workers to turn to who can help them address their social and emotional health. And I want to thank Chair Traeger for his annoying and unrelenting advocacy on social workers. Because of this council, libraries will have an additional $33 million for the critical services they provide every New Yorker. And I want to thank Jimmy Van Bramer, the chair of our Libraries and Cultural Affairs Committee. Because of this council, parks will get a $43 million investment for gardeners, maintenance workers, PEP officers, urban rangers, the Green Thumb program, and we are, baseline, we are baselining 150 of those seasonal workers and gardeners. A huge investment. 
And I want to thank Lynn Kelly up there for her advocacy and the entire Fair Play Coalition for their hard work. Because of this council, our streets will be cleaner because this year we doubled the amount of funding for litter basket pickup throughout our city. And I want to thank Antonio Reynoso, the chair of our sanitation committee, for his hard work and advocacy. Since the handshake on Friday, which feels like three weeks ago, I've had some people say in reference to our budget agreement that pay parity didn't get it done. And in a technical sense, they may be right in as much as the funding is not yet included in the budget. But I challenge that premise as missing the big picture. What we have achieved on pay parity is remarkable and transformational. Because of our advocacy, this council's advocacy, unity, and tenacity, for the first time, the city is on a clear and defined path in ensuring that our early childhood education workers all of them, teachers and non-teachers alike, will be compensated equitably. These are predominantly women and predominantly women of color, and the same is true of public defenders and civil legal service providers. I, for one, am thrilled at what we've accomplished on pay parity in this city and through this budget. I also want to highlight the criminal justice work that is funded in this budget because it's an issue that is important in this moment we are living in. New York City is on the forefront of tackling systemic disparities within our criminal justice system. And I'm happy to say that $54.5 million is being included for that purpose. Some of the funding will support the expansion of supervised release now that we got the criminal justice reforms that were enacted at the state level and go into effect in January. And we're bringing Project Reset, which was borough-wide in the Bronx, we are bringing it citywide. We're creating a brand new and the first of its kind felony alternatives to incarceration court park, court part in Brooklyn with the chief judge there. And we're adding 100 uh, transitional housing beds for mentally ill male defendants to divert them from Rikers Island and get them the treatment and help that they need. We're providing the city's first major investment in programs and services for people involved in the sex trade to help them. And I want to congratulate my colleagues. We also got, and I'm sure members are going to, I didn't want to list everything we're getting. I want to leave time for members to talk about it. But we got a huge investment for the young people of New York City, an expansion of 4,000 uh, new compass slots. We restored the money on Sonic and on Work, Learn, Grow. We continue to fight for SYEP. We have been a champion for young people and for seniors through Margaret Chin's leadership as chair of the Agent Committee. We have fought for the vulnerable. We did it last year in securing fair fares. We've done it this year in the new money we've received for things that are the most egalitarian things in New York City, parks and libraries and schools, things that touch and change New Yorkers' lives every single day. So I'm really grateful. I want to congratulate my colleagues. You all did great work. Before proceeding with today's votes, I'll mention that in addition to the budget items we're voting on today, we're voting on one Article 11 property tax exemption in Councilmember Espinal and Barron's districts in Brooklyn to preserve 45 units of affordable housing. And we're also voting on Introduction 1607, sponsored by our transportation chair, Idanis Rodriguez, which will reduce the annual commercial motor vehicle tax imposed on taxi cab medallions from $1,000 to $400. And with that, that concludes today's agenda. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes and adopting a budget that will be a champion for all New Yorkers. To everyone who works so diligently to bring us here, there aren't enough thanks to express my gratitude. I also want to mention, wasn't in my remarks, but uh, in 10 days, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, the uprising at Stonewall which lit a match for worldwide equality in 1969 and led us on the path that we're on today. Now, I've said it before, and I know that Danny and Jimmy and Carlos and Richie have spoken of it as well, but none of us would be here today if it were not for the activists that came before us. There is still an epidemic of violence against LGBT people in the United States of America and even here in the city of New York. We still have too many people who are 
becoming HIV positive. We still have too many runaway and homeless LGBT youth. There is still discrimination that exists in New York City.